Hello everybody, Thomas here and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, May the 23rd and time, of course, for another mailbag. Hope you guys have had an awesome week, awesome weekend. Uh, mine was really good. It has been raining cats and dogs and pigeons and gerbils and etc, etc, insert animal here all week long. So I uh, have gotten quite a bit of reading done. Lots of productivity this week. I'm very happy to, uh, to have all that under my belt, especially in the post-BEA Nebula's week. So back... Back in the saddle, for real. Okay, I uh, got a big old stack of uh, envelopes this week. Too big to sit in my lap. Eight packages. Um, looks to be about, maybe about ten or so titles. So I want to get into those fairly quickly because I've noticed of late some of the mailbags have been run running a little long. I'm going to try to, uh, you know, temper that a bit. Uh, so I suppose then, without further ado, because I have no more announcements, uh, except to say some reviews this week at long last. Uh, but other than that, Let's quit wasting time and get to the books, shall we? But before I actually get into the mailbag, into this week's actual packages, I have one more title, uh, one more book uh, from my BEA Nebula's Weekend Haul <laughs> that uh, didn't make it into that video, uh, mainly because I didn't pick this up until Sunday morning, by which time I had already recorded and uploaded the video and then shipped everything home to myself because I sent home like two and a half cases worth of books is insane. Whoever decided to put a, a UPS office uh, outlet in, in the lobby of the Palmer House Hilton is an absolute genius, and I love that person. Made life a whole lot easier, but I didn't get this until I was nearly out the door, and this is These Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. This is her big space opera. Uh, this is coming out from Saga Press in January, and this is not this is not actually an arc. Uh, what this is, this is a, uh, these are bound galleys. I mean, they're directly printed out from Cameron's manuscript. And they were made by Joe Monty, her editor at Saga, uh, who essentially went to FedEx Kinko's, right? And uh, printed up 10 copies, like directly from her manuscript, and then had them bound in this way with the cover image. And these were made to uh, essentially take to Nebula Weekend and pass out to select authors. Uh, for the purposes of blurbs, right? You know, you get a new novel by your favorite writer, and right there along the top of the front cover it says something like, electrifying, says, you know, John Scalzi or whoever they get, right? So that's what these were for. And uh, at the end of the conference on Sunday morning, Cameron had one copy left, and she very graciously gave it to me, uh, which uh, I thought was quite lovely. So uh, I have this. My own review of it, uh, in terms of, like, public availability, that's going to be probably embargoed until much later in the year maybe November-ish, you know, closer to the actual release date of the book. Publishers really, really don't like advanced reviews to go out publicly, you know, half a frickin' year in advance, because that kind of, you know, there's such a, there's such a thing as advanced buzz, but then there's a little too advanced, and they like for reviews to be timed fairly close to the window of a book's release. But I'm going to go ahead, as soon as BookTube SFF Awards and all my commitments with that are done, this goes to the top of the review queue, I'm going to go ahead and get my review written, if I think Joe can use it at Saga, I will send it to him, and uh, then it'll just be ready. But I, I'm super chuffed to have this. All I know about it is that this is her big space opera saga. Uh, there is not a single man in the cast of the book, and it, uh, it comes out January. So thank you so much, Cameron and Joe, uh, for letting me have this. And uh, yeah, it's not even, like I said, only 10 of these were made, so it's a, a bit of a special thing to have, and Cam signed it for me. So uh, look forward to this in January. <laughs> Alright, and the mailbag proper this week starts out with this white envelope, which usually indicates a Tor title, or someone from Macmillan, anyway. Tor, I love you, but this is like the third comp company town that you've sent me. This is uh, Yes, I do plan to review this very, very soon. Madeline Ashby's Company Town, um, now out in hardcover from Tor. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, sometimes you get doubled up like this. But it is a dazzling novel of humanity, noir heroines, and the singularity. I guess that's suitable because I'm wearing my Noir City Film Festival t-shirt for this episode. Don't know if you can read it, but um, all right, Company Town, out now from Tor. And speaking of Saga, here we have a package from Simon & Schuster from the Saga publicist. So um, yeah, let's see what we've got, shall we? And it is a package of finished copies of new Saga releases. These are things that I have actually already gotten in ARC form, but it's always nice to have the finished copies anyway. Uh, this first one is Dark Run by Mike Brooks. This is a space opera, the uh, first book in a series called Keiko. And it says, The Keiko is a ship of smugglers, soldiers of fortune, and con artists. Traveling Earth's colony planets, searching for the next job, and nobody aboard talks about their past until now. Captain Ichabod Drift 
is being blackmailed. Uh oh. The Keiko has to deliver a mysterious load of cargo to Old Earth at a specific time and place unseen. It's what they call a dark run, and all too accurately, as when the delivery goes south, it may be their last. Into a corrupt galaxy where criminals like the crew on the Keiko are often the last, are the best, excuse me, people in it, especially when they're motivated by revenge. Hmm. So we have some action packed space opera from Mike Brooks. And. This is a very, very lovely and moody looking fantasy from Frederick Durbin. It is called A Green and Ancient Light. Uh, the street date for it is June the 7th, and it says, because there's no cell sheet, so I have to read this, As planes darken the sky and cities burn in the ravages of war, a boy is sent away to the safety of an idyllic fishing village far from the front to stay with the grandmother he does not know, but their tranquility is shattered by the crash of a bullet-riddled enemy plane that brings the war and someone else to their doorstep. Grandmother's mysterious friend, Mr. Girandol, Girandol, who is far more than he seems, has appeared out of the night to ask Grandmother for help in doing the unthinkable. In the forest near Grandmother's cottage lies a long abandoned garden of fantastic statues, a grove of monsters, where sunlight sets the leaves aglow and the movement at the corner of the eye might just be fairy magic. A little hard to read, it's like white text on a dark background here. Hidden within is a riddle that has lain unsolved for centuries, a riddle that contains the only solution to their impossible problem. To solve it will require courage, sacrifice, and friendship with the most unlikely allies. So it's being compared to Peter S. Beagle and Patricia McKillop, that kind of mystical fantasy, a green and ancient light from Frederick Durbin on the 7th of June. And finally, on June the 7th, from Saga, we have The Medusa Chronicles by Stephen Baxter and Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, this is a follow-up to Arthur C. Clarke's classic novella, A Meeting with Medusa, and it goes kind of like this. Okay, I'm going to avoid reading uh, some of this flap because it totally spoils A Meeting with Medusa, but the idea basically is that there's this guy named Howard Falcon. He was the first astronaut to fly through the skies of Jupiter, and he's sort of like part human, part cyborg. And uh, while there, he discovers, you know, life in the, in the billowing atmosphere of Jupiter, these giant you know, jellyfish-like creatures. And so it says, uh, inspired by Clark's novella, The Medusa Chronicles continues the story of Howard Falcon, perhaps humanity's greatest ambassador and explorer, and the centuries of his adventures among our solar system, the rise of artificial intelligence, and our expansion onto other planets, written with the permission from Clark's estate by two of our greatest science fiction writers, Stephen Baxter and Alistair Reynolds. Quite, uh, quite excited to get into this myself, uh, but the Medusa, Medusa Chronicles is out on the 7th of June from Saga Press. <sighs> what do we have here? A random penguin package, it would seem. And here I have yet another arc for Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan. Uh, these were flying around like confetti at Nebula Weekend, and I picked up a few there and uh, gave some out to some friends, uh, some booktubing friends, and but they have sent me one in the mail all the same, which I knew they would because I always get arcs from Del Rey. This is uh, the start of a new series by Michael J. Sullivan, very popular epic fantasy author. Uh, this new series is called The Legends of the First Empire. Comes out June the 28th, and it just says, let's see, um, it's going to be a five-book series. Since time immemorial, humans have worshipped the gods they call Frey. F-H-R-E-Y, truly a race apart, invincible in battle, masters of magic, and seemingly immortal. But when a god falls to a human blade, the balance of power between humans and those they thought were gods changes forever. Now only a few stand between humankind and annihilation. Wraith, reluctant to embrace his destiny as the god killer. Suri, a young seer burdened by signs of impending doom. And Persephone, who must overcome personal tragedy to lead her people. The age of myth is over. The time of rebellion has begun. Okay, so June the 28th, Michael J. Sullivan fans, new series begins. And okay, this next one, oh, it looks like it's probably going to be another saga title. Okay, it is not a new saga title, but it's one I'm very happy to get. It is actually from uh, Simon & Schuster's uh, YA line. And uh, I saw these being passed around at BEA, but didn't actually manage to get a hold of one myself. But here it is. It is called The Diabolic. Uh, it comes out November the 1st, uh, the author is S.J. Yes, S.J. Kincaid, and it says nothing can prepare you for your nemesis. A diabolic is ruthless. A diabolic is powerful. A diabolic has a single task: kill in order to protect the person you've been created for. For nemesis, that person is Sidonia, heir to the Galactic Senate. But when the power-mad emperor summons Sidonia to the Galactic Court as a hostage, there is only one way for nemesis to protect Sidonia: she must become her. 
Now one of the galaxy's most dangerous weapons is masquerading amidst politicians and two-faced senator's children, and Nemesis must find within herself the one thing she's been told she doesn't have. Humanity. Okay, well this sounds like a very, very action-packed uh, teen SF uh, from Simon & Schuster, S.J. Kincaid, November the 1st, The Diabolic. Oh, well this looks awfully nice. It is an anthology called The Best Science Fiction of the Year, uh, Volume 1. So I guess it is a new Best Of series that they're trying to start up. This comes from Nightshade. The editor is Neil Clark, so this is not Gardner Dozois's annual year's Best SF. This is a new thing. And let's see, so what all is in it? This comes out on... When does it come out? It says uh, the 7th of June. All right, lots of June 7th releases this time. Uh, so um, we have stories by Seth Dickinson, Aliette de Bedard, Shauna McGuire, Paul McCauley, John Chu, uh, Naomi Kritzer, Carrie Vaughn, uh, Anne Leckie, Robert Reed, David Brin, Ken Liu, uh, Nancy Kress, loads of people, tons of stuff in here. And Neil Clark is the uh, award-winning publisher and editor-in-chief of Clark's World. Then here you go. This new anthology series starts June the 7th from Nightshade. Okay, only a couple packages left to go. This is another random penguin. Well, okay then. June the 7th sees the trade paperback release of China Mieville's story collection, Three Moments of an Explosion. Uh, got this in hardcover last year, but now the paperback is out, for those of you who want to save a few bucks. Let's see. London awakes one morning to find itself besieged by a sky full of floating icebergs. Destroyed oil rigs, mysteriously reborn, clamber from the sea and onto the land, driven by an obscure but violent purpose. An anatomy student cuts open a cadaver to discover impossibly intricate designs carved into a corpse's bones. Designs clearly present from birth, bearing mute testimony to what? Of such concepts and unforgettable images are made the 28 stories in this collection, mainly pub many published here for the first time. So, at last in paperback on June the 7th from Del Rey. And last one, you guys. This is a rather heavy envelope from Random Penguin. All right, everyone, and coming out tomorrow, it is The City of Mirrors by Justin Cronin. This is the third uh, and final book, I believe, in his Passage trilogy. Um, it is sort of this post-apocalyptic kind of sort of sci-fi vampire thing. I read the passage when it came out uh, some years ago. Liked it a lot better than I was expecting to. I reviewed it, but I still haven't read The Twelve, which was book two, and now The City of Mirrors is out. So I guess I can do uh, books two and three back to back fairly soon. But this comes out tomorrow, like I said, the 24th of May. And I guess all that I will bother to read uh, from the cell sheet here is that for the last time, Amy, the girl from nowhere who lived a thousand years, will join her friends and face down the demons that threaten the last of humanity. So, alrighty then. Wrapping up tomorrow, The City of Mirrors by Justin Cronin. And that is it for the mailbag this week, you guys. You know the drill. Light up those comments, let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you'd like to see me prioritize in the review queue. Uh, the only thing that I will add is that something else did come this week and the box for it was mixed in with everything else, all the books, and so I had forgotten to pull it out or I didn't know what it was, but I am so happy to have this. I have finally just dropped the money, gotten a proper lavalier mic for myself, so I no longer have to do this ridiculous rig. Uh, gonna see a, a nice production upgrade at long last. I've wanted a proper mic for myself for a very, very long time, and I'm uh, really happy to have gotten this. I, I'd worried that it hadn't come in yet, but it turns out that it was just buried in the pile with everything else. So, alrighty guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed watching. Share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please sub. If you have not done so, that's how SFF 180 grows as a channel, and until I see you all next time, happy reading.